can hug every cat. Hey, uh, sorry. Hey, uh, sorry. We're doing this today. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, hey, welcome uh, to part two of our Lab Notes mini series on QPCR primer assay design. So we've already covered primer and picking the right target sequence in the last episode. If you missed it, it's waiting for you right here on the BioRad Life Science YouTube channel. Today, we're sharing five tips for those of you who are using hydrolysis probes. Number one, the melting temperature of your probes should be about eight to 10 degrees higher than that of your primers. And we're talking about Celsius, of course. Tip number two, for most applications, your probe should be shorter than 30 nucleotides. Anything longer than that, and you may want to consider including an internal quencher. Tip number three, make sure that your probe does not have a uh, five prime G. Five prime Gs are horrible. They can quench fluorescence even hi after hydrolysis. Tip number four, if you're looking at gene expression and you're working with eukaryote organisms, do design that probe or one of your primers to span an X and X injunction. That will prevent you from amplifying genomic DNA that might contaminate your solution. And finally, last but not least, run that probe sequence through a blast alignment, just to make sure that it doesn't bind any other sequence in your genome of interest. If you'd like to make your life a little easier, check out our pre-designed and validated prime PCR gene expression assays. If you missed one of the episodes, you can find it right here at the BioRad Life Science YouTube channel. If you have tips of your own or have a topic that you'd really like us to cover, we'd love to hear about it. Just leave a note on the YouTube comment section. That's it. Live long and prosper.